everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. If you're tuning in for the first time today, welcome. If you just watched the Creative Challenge, welcome back. My name is Kendall Plant, and today I'm joined with the wonderfully creative Sin Lagos. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sin, Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Sin is a photographer, graphic designer, all around creative human being. And Sin is also an Adobe Creative resident this year. So we'll definitely be chatting about that later in the stream today. Yeah. I, I like that description, all creative human beings. Creative human being. <laughs> We're all creative human beings here today. Um, so say hello in the chat. We have a lot of people in there so far. Kathleen, oh, everyone say hi to Kathleen. Nice. Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. Oh, Whitney, hello. Kathleen. Omar, hi there. Roberto, we've got a lot of folks in chat today. Um, so hi, we have a great, Valentina. yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, say hello to your chat neighbor. Say hi to us. Human being, we're human beings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hi from Sweden, hi Julia. Hi Julia. Um, so today we have a great stream for you all. We are going to be creating some social media graphics in Photoshop, and we'll also be talking about career building. Um, and answering your questions about all things Photoshop and chatting about being a creative career yeah. person. Yeah. Exciting stuff. So this morning we had a Photoshop daily creative challenge with Jesus. Um, and after our stream this morning, we are going to be having another daily creative challenge. Those creative challenges are happening every day this week, so make sure you tune into those. And later today, we will be doing um, Designing for Any screen, screen in XD, I believe, with Julian. So um, make sure you say hello in chat. We have someone from the UK, Neil in there, Bulgaria. Oh, wow. Montreal. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of folks in there. <laughs> yeah, really Paris. Nice. We have a Minnesota, woo, go Minnesota. We have a lot of people from all over the all world over today. The world. That is really cool. Human being. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chat being. full of human beings today. <laughs> um, so speaking of chat, we have a chat and win about 30 minutes into the stream today. Uh, you are gonna have a chance to win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Yes. yes. Right there. I want those stickers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wish we could win. Um, so if you're in here watching and chatting, you're ahead of the curve. All you have to do to have a chance to win free stickers is to be in chat, be logged in at behance.net slash live, and just be active in chat. Ask questions, say hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself, say hi to your chat neighbor, um, and just yeah. kind of. Thanks, be Kathleen. Yeah. Sin is a big hustler. Yes. I like the way you wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Portugal, Nigeria, Ukraine, North Carolina, From Holland, Colombia. Colombia. Wow. Hola, have, ¿qué tal? <laughs> <laughs> we have such a cool chat group today. John, yes. Larry, Noor, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Oleg, thank you all for, ch for tuning in. This is awesome. So make sure you keep chatting away and have a chance to win those free stickers. In addition to chat and win, we also have the daily creative challenge going on in Discord. So later in the stream, we'll be taking a look at your creations. Today's challenge was make or is make a photo look cinematic using selective color adjustments. Kind of a mouthful, but yeah. we got through it. <laughs> I love making photos look cinematic. I think it's. Uh, Something a lot of people kind of don't think of when they're editing. Yeah. So, well, I'm excited to look at these. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a great challenge, and it'll definitely tie into what we're going to be showing today. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you check out the challenge tab. Um, I think up there for all the information about how you can enter the challenge and have your work reviewed, and we'll be looking at that work later on Discord. Um, so, without further ado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? Hi, know. everyone. Um, okay, so my name is Sin Lagos. That's actually my name. Um, I'm a street photographer and graphic designer, and now I am a, an aspiring film artist, so I'm excited about that. Everything I've uh, been able to pursue, I've um, taught myself, so that's really exciting because now I have sort of um, an opportunity to teach other people and be on the other side of the screen. And that's really um, very important to me to share my work. I, I think this is already like such an, a crazy journey, uh, being part of the Adobe Creative Residency. Mm -hmm. um, 
I feel like I was just here <laughs> in San Francisco uh, last week, but time has flown by and we've been doing some really exciting things, um, meeting some really talented people. I mean, uh, just like yesterday, I was able to meet somebody who was teaching me how to um, speak better. Hopefully, some things translate. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been it's been great so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, um, can we take a look at Sin's website real quick? Scroll through it. Um, so you do a lot of street photography, and my keyboard is not working still. So mm. <laughs> we'll look at the home screen. Um, maybe Sin can pull it up on her. Yeah. So yeah. We're having some technical difficulties with it. My wouldn't be this morning. Uh, of and course. Adobe Live without it. Yeah. You have to add some drama, you know? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, so this is my website. I'm gonna show you guys. So my prime selects are some of my favorite photographs that I think have been able to accomplish um, some of the things that I really, really wanna accomplish in my career. Most of it ha includes like photography from around the world. Uh, I've sort of just pursued traveling on my own. Um, nobody told me to do it, but I was just like very keen on trying to uh, capture different cultures. Um, I got bit by the bug of street photography sort of early in my career as a graphic designer. And um, I was just telling um, Kendall here that I, I was working in downtown Miami, which was really interesting at the time because downtown Miami, if anybody um, is familiar with it, is very gritty, very interesting. So like getting out of work at 6 p.m., it was always sort of a, an interesting like walk, just seeing all this different lighting, really interesting architecture. So I continued to pursue that in my travels and I was able to capture some really cool street photography with stark lighting, which is some, some of my favorite um, approaches to photography. This one here is from New York. And it's a person yeah. sort of looking outside the window and the classic taxis, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all the play with light in these is really yeah. fantastic. Street photography has such a potential for finding those shadows and yeah. bits of light. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually this one up here, this one right here. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites because it prompts people to figure out what's going on, mm -hmm. which I think um, that in itself is such a big accomplishment when it comes to photography. If you can get your viewer to um, finish the storyline, right? You don't have to just tell them this is what it is. It's, or, it's almost like a, enter the imagination. Mm -hmm. And this, this photo specifically is actually two different people, but a lot of people think that is her shadow. Wow. And they don't know each other. This was just yeah. a, a moment that I was able to capture in the hustle and bustle of uh, Manhattan. I really like that one. Yeah, when a photo can tell a story like that, it's really, yeah. really powerful, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to be um, learning how to, you know, use photos like these or your own work <laughs> to to create social media graphics in Photoshop. I think a couple of them are going to be animated, maybe? Yes. Maybe day yeah. two. Tune yeah. in tomorrow to see that. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a great opportunity to have Sin share her knowledge of how to promote your work. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, definitely social media has taken a, sort of a huge part of my career development. I think it's really nice to pursue your your, your passion, but it's also important to share it mm -hmm. nowadays, right? Um, and sharing it to one person is just as exciting. I'm always very big on that. Um, but social media has become sort of like a space where I can showcase my portfolio, have people interact with my work, have people ask me questions of how this happened. And it, it helps me, it's so, almost like a sustainable relationship because it helps me understand how far I've gotten or what is it that I've done? Because mm -hmm. it just kind of flashes before before your eyes, right? So yeah, awesome, yeah. very cool, cool. All right, mm -hmm. so I think we're ready to jump into Photoshop if you are. Yes, yeah. we got a lot of great comments, mm -hmm. amazing photos. Wowza, wowza, I like that, Gustavo. Wowzer, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice, awesome. So this is an example of what uh, I hope to make uh, within these two days. This is actually behind the scenes of what I get asked for the most. They, people always ask me how I make my stories mm -hmm. because they are 
um, always designed, or they have a lot of graphic design elements. And I think when uh, Instagram came out with stories, I do stories in like back in 2016, I sort of knew right away that I wanted to uh, create some design element mm -hmm. in it because um, in graphic design, we were just accustomed to learning about this idea of user interaction, right? UI. Right. And so I knew I'm like, okay, this is a cool opportunity. It's 15 seconds and people tap. Yeah. That's probably an opportunity to make them feel like they're part of this. They're mm -hmm. interacting with the next thing that they see. So this is how um, I ended up in Photoshop Artboards because Photoshop Artboards was uh, at first sort of uh, created as a, um, as a need for people who created apps, mm -hmm. designed apps, and they, they needed to create different frames and um, show them to developers later. So this is how I got familiarized with um, Artboards to begin with. So I reappropriated this um, idea into uh, stories. So now I Very always cool. create my templates here. It's a lot of fun because it's, um, it's just like not too specific, so I get to just play around and mm -hmm. lose hours just yes. playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, artboards are a great feature in Photoshop that not a lot of people use, I think, to their biggest To their advantage, yeah. yeah. I, I think a lot of people aren't aware of them, mm -hmm. which really blows my mind every single time. So sure. they look a little bit like this, and if you're familiar with apps like um, Illustrator, um, they, they actually have artboards. That, mm -hmm. that was sort of in the beginning um, stages of Illustrator, but not so much of Photoshop. Um, so the way you make artboards, and we can start making some things now. Diana says it's so pleasant when you see a well-designed Instagram story. Well, you oh, are in luck. <laughs> yeah. That's just what we're gonna be doing today. Thank you, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I think so too, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we see so much, uh, we, we get bombarded by so much information that mm -hmm. it's nice to see something that just like makes you feel something or yeah. it's well um, narrated. So I usually go here to um, new document and then you have the options to make a print document, a photo document, but in this case, we're making assets for web, right? So uh, this by default brings up the pixels um, and I'm making a 1080 by 1920 or reverse 1920 by 1080 I always forget <laughs> vertical so you can always put like orientation vertical and it'll switch it for you and that those are the specs for um, Instagram stories right mm -hmm. and that's yeah it's nice to have those built yeah in right in so right away my first um, I like to stay organized because then I know um, what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to get creative and just chaotic. Yeah. I think creative and chaotic are always side by side. Um, when I make a, a story, I actually follow this like theme of making a story, mm -hmm. so a short story. So a short story has um, an intro, a body, and a conclusion. So I like to think of it that way. And then allow myself to go in different directions if, if I think of something else. Taking that story term literally, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Kathleen is asking how you feel about the fact that Instagram stories have a short lifespan. Um, obviously we're gonna spend a good chunk of time yeah, over the next couple of days designing so them and they go away so quickly. Yeah, maybe it's, I have two answers to that. One is very philosophical. Um, I think it's good to not have to not hold on to anything because it gives you room to design something new, right? Mm -hmm. I have so much work from my early days as a graphic designer that I ran into in a hard drive the other day, and I was just like, "Wow, this is interesting." But I have lived without it for several years now, mm -hmm. so it's it's good to let go, so you allow yourself room to maybe reshape your your aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, on another end, you can always, if you really, really must keep them, you can always showcase them in um, your IG highlights, which I think I can like show you guys here. Carrie Ann, first timer, welcome to Adobe Live. Glad yeah. you're chatting with us. Oops, too many shortcuts. Anyways. <laughs> So the whole point of what I was trying to say is um, on IG highlights, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people are familiar with like creating icons for your IG highlights, which is neat. But I, I just place my favorite stories there and I allow people to just um, have a, a browse and just find different weird things that I've made in the past. Yeah. 
Actually, I asked um, last the last few weeks, I asked if I should bring any of them down and everybody was very adamant for me not to bring any of them down. I was like, no, this is not helping. I am trying to clean house. <laughs> yeah, being able to, to feature those, um, those stories and archive them on Instagram is really great. You can kind of categorize what you're doing and yeah. you know, invest time in it's, make one So thing. I always treat it sort of as a place for people to review my portfolio and mm -hmm. my, um, my development in my uh, career. So always treat it that way. I think you'll never know who's going to step into your Instagram um, and possibly give you an amazing opportunity like yeah. Adobe <laughs> Creative Residency. Definitely, so. yeah, Instagram can act as a portfolio. We can have lots of portfolios all over the place, it seems like now. Yeah. You know. So I start with the artwork one, I name it cover. Mm -hmm. And then right away you'll see that it changes the name up here, which is gets tinier as I get closer. Um, but what th this does also, um, aside from just reminding me that I'm going to have to make a cover for my, for my um, story, it also will export with the name cover. So whenever I have to um, reference my files, I already have a name for them. So it's not gonna be hard later to figure out which what goes where. Mm -hmm. And so I hit Alt or Option um, on my keyboard and I'm able to make another copy. All right, or you can go here, lay your new artboard, and you're able to make another copy. And so here I usually put, mm, because it's body, right? So I'll put body dash text, sort of a intro text, right? It's always good to break um, the story with a little um, anecdote or information about yourself, about what you're hoping to do. Also, it's important to think about a theme. Sometimes some of my stories explore um, a theme within a series of photographs. So that's a good opportunity for me to showcase more than one photo on the grid. But also sometimes I showcase how I make something. So my theme in this case is actually, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I conceptually edited this image, which is uh, one of my favorite images uh, now that I've taken on drone photography. I conceptualize this edit, and the reason why I say conceptualize is because um, improving a photo is one way to go about it, you know, technically improving a photo, but there's also a, a facet where you consider what does this photo represent, um, what does the location represent, what, it, what feelings do you want to um, evoke mm -hmm. with your color palette. And so I wanted to showcase in my stories how I created that um, without it being sort of boring and yeah. then feeling, yeah, so this is a conceptual edit, before and after, done. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Gustavo with some with some deep insight. What do you keep in the experience and knowledge, which it helps. Yeah, so everything is gonna be forgotten. Everything's very, you know, fleeting, but it's a good chance to reach out to people and, you know, give them a little bit of experience or influence, pretty cool. <laughs> Kathleen, wait, is this a short form tutorial? Yeah, we'll plug it. <laughs> Kathleen, Erica, and I, who also is sometimes in chat, uh, work on a lot of short form content, which you can find on YouTube. Maybe Kathleen can drop the <laughs> link in the chat pod. <laughs> Um, let's see, Julia asked if you only ever use Photoshop for Instagram stories, and she mentions that she uses After Effects sometimes. Yeah, so um, I'm a big advocate of combining programs, and I always end up uh, combining either Photoshop with Illustrator because a lot of my um, shapes come from Illustrator because they're vector files. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows me to just sort of like mess with them and they don't get uh, blurry or weird. And then sometimes I use After Effects to animate my covers, but I can also do a lot of that in Photoshop. Well, Photoshop is one of, um, a lot of people have a favorite Adobe program, right? I don't wanna say it's any of them, but I wanna say right now that maybe Photoshop is one of the mo most multifaceted, yeah. where you can learn um, a lot of different um, intro levels to animation, to illustration, uh, photo manipulation, and in this case, composition, because this um, practice that we're doing here is is more uh, specific to InDesign because it's a, it's definitely composition and organizing elements mm -hmm. and uh, exporting them sort of in a, a story format. 
Yeah, it, I think someone mentioned in chat um, learning about artboards for the first time, and it really emphasizes that, you know, <laughs> in addition to photo editing and compositing stuff, you can really push Photoshop to its limits with artboards. We're going to be looking at some animation over the past next couple of days, so um, it is that really multi-purpose yeah, tool. It is really yeah. multi-purpose. So I have my images here. I've selected a few that I wanted to use. I have this really cool photo. Um, so a lot of times I think of my photography as not just showing one, but maybe um, layering them together. So this one's a very clean one that I thought I could use as sort of a background. So I had before that, so I'll show you that I had this selected already. If I had another one selected, it would have fallen, it would have been dropped into that one. So I had this one selected. So I came here. And then I increase, I'm gonna increase this because I want it to take over the entire feed, mm -hmm. the entire space. Yeah, nice clean background. Yeah, so then um, one of the things I like doing is sort of merging that photo with the next scene. So because I have this here, what I could do is just um, option and drag. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I love shortcuts, by the way. <laughs> Sina was telling us about her custom shortcuts that she set up in Photoshop. So if you have questions about shortcuts and key commands, yeah. <laughs> she's it's, the person to ask. It's the one way. I <laughs> One of my friends called me a ninja because I was just like, she's like, how did you do that? I'm like shortcuts is definitely like the the best thing that you can learn in any of these programs. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about that is, um, I'll just show you guys here, but you can always um, make your own keyboard shortcuts. So if there isn't a keyboard shortcut and I didn't have one to export these files, I actually made one you can always custom uh, make your own um, shortcuts and have them uh, and probably import them into any other computer, right? Like, Yeah, I, yeah. Think, it's, I think you can see about your Photoshop references. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is I, I think is really like a game changer. Um, instead of just dragging it uh, inside the file, which sort of just puts it in that same position as I had um, the first one, I'll drag it above the the folder and it actually matches matches the files. That's awesome. So it's not, there's no need for me to move and make sure the pixels are correct. So this is also helpful when you're trying to make those um, panoramic uh, slides on your grid mm -hmm. that you want them all to match. I use our boards for that too. Yeah, let's so you, show that one more time. That's a really great You'll see tip. right here, yeah. just like it's Seamless. exact. Yeah. Um, so let me see, I'll do that again. And remember that we have a chat and win in about five minutes, so keep chatting. <laughs> so I'll hold Option or Alt, and then instead of putting it inside, you'll put it above the folder. Very cool. That's very key because if you put it inside, it will place it um, paste in place, which is um, not exactly what you were going for. So then that gives you that pano effect, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, seamless is can be tricky to do between screens, but that's a yeah. great tip for. I used to sometimes yeah. like I used to put a little red dot on one side, <laughs> and then <laughs> and you know it's so time consuming. And when you figure out things like this, you're like, wow, game changers, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So then I'm gonna make my cover here. I decided I wanted to use this one as um, like sort of the overlay. So I'm gonna put wait, make sure I had this selected. Yes. So I'll put this one here. Kathleen's mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's cheering. Jessica Lopez, go sin. Nice. Oh, Jessica. Nice to see you guys here. Thank you for supporting me. <laughs> Julia um, mentioned that she also uses XD for, for screen design, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm actually learning a little bit more about that. And it's really interesting to see um, how many of these apps are very related to each other, mm -hmm. which is very uh, much strength. I think like once you learn one program, it might seem intimidating to learn another program, but it's, I always compare it to almost learning the same language. So I speak Spanish and I'm trying to learn Italian. Oh. And at least I understand what people say. It's almost like that 
because there's a lot of familiar pieces. So um, XD Julie, uh, I definitely I want to give it give it give it a try after this. <laughs> so many things to learn. Yeah, yeah, and these sort of tips and just efficiency building really is yeah. is really helpful when we're talking about creating a career on social media because everything goes so fast. So if you can, you know, get your workflow to churn out yeah. so much as quickly as possible, you're really going to be able to appease the social media <laughs> overlords <laughs> yeah. who want content every day. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's a high demand. Mm -hmm. So I treat this one as a cover, and this is kind of cool to uh, play around with um, a little bit of that graphic design poster aesthetic. And so I, I wanted to name my this series a day off because um, even though it wasn't my day off, I am always very intrigued at the many people that are at the beach um, in the middle of the day on a Monday. Uh, <laughs> I really, you know, I envy them, which is kind of cool. So I wanted to photograph this scene and I went to South Beach at one o'clock and that's why you see these very sharp shadows here. The sun is right above us. And I really wanted that because it gives that, that picture sort of a graphic um, aesthetic. They almost look like miniature toys because of those shadows. So I wanted to call this a day off, which is, I really encourage everyone to always contemplate why you took the photo. And this is gonna allow you to um, develop the theme of your um, stories. Yeah, so when you're, when you're creating your stories, do you ever storyboard out your stories ahead of time? Uh, I think that's a really good idea, <laughs> but I don't. I, I, try to just let it be sort of a very um, organic creative process. I do have some uh, guides, like things like this, like having the, the cover, the body, and the conclusion that really helps me, but I also wanna leave room for just um, creative, um, strange weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> and we're about to do the chat and win in Ooh. about 30 seconds, but before we do that, do you have any tips for, some people are asking about tips for finding good fonts or how do you choose the font that you like? Um, I have this very, um, I've been fixated on this font. Well, I've been fi fixated on this font specifically, uh, Cooper Bold, mm -hmm. um, because I associate that to one of the few fonts that you can find anywhere. You can find it some, somewhere very elegant and you can also find it in the streets and it's so true to my work. So always have a favorite font. I think that's great. Um, it's good to do that, especially for your own branding. But if you're trying to find new fonts, um, I I don't know, I don't, I keep sort of like a short arsenal of the ones I've had. Mm -hmm. So the ones I have, I do use um, wordmark.it, which is, I love that place. I don't know if you can look for it, no. Um, wordmark.it shows all your, uh, fonts inside your computer, so mm -hmm. you're, you're able to see them right away. Very cool. All right, we have chat and win. The timer is zero, zero. Do we have a winner? You guys, just chat away, ask some questions. We have a very active chat today. So keep asking things to send, so contributing your thinking. input about creative, being a creative, or if you want we to be a started, professional yeah. creative. Yeah, we just started, Catherine. We have just kicked off about a half an hour ago, so you have plenty of time to keep watching. I'll be your winner, <laughs> Marissa. I, I like that attitude. Yes, yeah, sticker Yes. Do we have a winner? Welcome back from Chat and Win. <laughs> <laughs> stickers, please. Everyone wants stickers. Fonts, yes. corn? Font stickers are Adobe obsession. corn. Oh, com. Oh, dot com. Fonts.adobe.com. <laughs> right, that is corn. Sticker meal. Yes, we're going to get 100 free stickers. Where did you get your laptop skin at? <laughs> oh, uh, um, Society6. Nice. <laughs> That's Sin's own artwork. 
So yeah. really good self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Put yourself on your own artwork. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right. And Jeremy. our winner is Jeremy Moore. Congratulations. <laughs> you have won stickers from Sticker Mule, 100 yes. free stickers. Put them all over the streets. Yeah, and if you them. didn't win, don't worry, we're gonna do this a lot, but you can also get a nice discount using the code right up there. Um, you get 10 stickers for $1 if you go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19. So congratulations, Jeremy but everyone else, remember that you can get a nice little discount on those stickers from Sticker Mule. Very cool. All right, nice, congratulations. And we're back to Photoshop. So remember to keep asking questions to Sin. We are gonna talk about some creative career related stuff too. Um, so while you're working, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what being in Adobe Creative Resident is for anyone um, who doesn't know. It's, um, in short, hitting the lottery. <laughs> um, there's so many amazing perks to being an Adobe Creative Resident. Um, the most that I've experienced has been how much everyone cares about your development in your career. We have um, opportunities to have uh, coaches help us in how, how we're going to develop our project. So Adobe Creative Residence is, um, is basically uh, a project where, a program where you're able to pitch a project of your own. And they allow you to just like, explore this project for an entire year. They give you the resources, the, um, the support, the emotional support <laughs> that you need to be able to produce it. And um, it's been really, really amazing so far. I have. Um, there's nine of us in total, so there's there's different uh, craftsmanships that we're able to do. So there's like uh, UI designers, uh, there's illustrators, uh, we have photographers, videographers, and so if you are are good at any one of those, or you're passionate of it in, in any one of those, and you have an idea that you always wanted to just pursue, but you didn't have the resources to do that, definitely apply to this because. The resources are right here. They just like give you the talented um, individuals. Like they're just like at your disposal. They tell you, they try to mentor you and what you can do with your project, which is amazing. Very cool. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with the Creative Residency Program, um, Val dropped a link. Um, so if you're interested in applying maybe or just learning more about the program, definitely check out that link and meet the other Creative Residents too through that. It's a, really amazing opportunity and they change every year so yeah it's only one year mm -hmm. yeah it goes by fast so what are you doing here with your time right so i wanted to put a stroke on my font instead so what i did here was i removed the fill so that it's no longer that color and i double tapped and went into stroke and this can get really weird if you go too far. So you know, less is more, <laughs> less is always more. And then I wanted to make that white. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit about storyboarding. So usually, you know, when you're creating your Instagram stories, do you have a particular flow in mind or do you use the same sort of, almost a template for the stuff that you create? Uh, Definitely this structure helps me out a lot, but from time to time I do discover that I can do something new and weird and I keep that same aesthetic and maybe repurpose it for a different theme. Uh, whether that's um, tapping as and revealing um, different images or I have like the animations now that I introduce to sort of give the story sort of a pause, I'll introduce a video, mm -hmm. I'll introduce a boomerang. Nowadays we can do so many things just within the social media app yes. that gives it um, more dynamic, right? So you're not just seeing a picture and text, a picture and text, picture and text. You wanna create a, a sense of um, intrigue because it's always changing. Yeah, yeah, having those interactions um, on social media, whether it's in stories or you know, even asking a question on your Instagram posts or whatever social media is a 
really a great way to not only showcase your work, but get some interaction going and really create that extra engagement with whoever's looking at your profile. Maybe yeah. someone who's looking at your profile for a creative residency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one of the things I, I really like using here is um, masking. So I like kind of in, in making everything interact with each other. So I'm gonna do that with this font. So I have a day off here. So what I'm gonna do is add a mask, which is down here, add layer mask. And so what, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, a layer mask works, um, whatever is black will not show, whatever is white will show. So right now we have it in white, so everything's showing. Um, and I can go in here and use the brush tool and then just, let's make that smaller with the open brackets. Kerwin says, Kerwin says, I remember when social media was just deciding who was in my top eight on MySpace. Oh. So true. <laughs> <laughs> and Nora asked the if MySpace, MySpace still exists, even exists. I, I think it does. I think it had a design overhaul a couple years back in spirit. Oh, <laughs> um, so before you do that, I just realized something that I did here. So when you do this and you have a stroke, then this mm -hmm. weird thing will happen, which, you know, don't panic. So what we can do to remove that is make this into a convert to smart object. And then we can do the um, layer mask and that will not happen. Nice. Smart objects are a great tool to have for so many creative projects. They really help to preserve what you're doing. And Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's still a it's like a dynamic link, so you're still able to edit that mm -hmm. later if you need to. Yeah. So as we're working, if you guys have um, questions for Sin about how she uses social media for her own branding or career advice or you know the Adobe Cre Creative Residency, feel free to drop it into the chat and we'll do our best to answer all those questions that come up as we work. Yeah, so I really like including this, um, the sense of like it's actually part of the scene. Yeah, having that extra incorporation instead of just laying the type over. Yeah, so then that looks a, a lot more interesting. Maybe I can remove this one. So I'm using black, and one way to, um, I you can sort of toggle between these two by pressing X, so that makes it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Where did you um, take this photo? Uh, in South Beach, uh, in Miami, Florida. Jonathan says, this makes me want to get a drone. They're very fun. Yeah, they're a <laughs> lot of fun and a lot simpler to use than you think. Mm -hmm. I always um, I always take my friends and make them be co-pilots. So they, they watch out for birds and, <laughs> and helicopters and low flying planes. And then I um, help them, they help me by, um, by watching out for that. But then I teach them how to land it. And they're like, oh, that was easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bird watchers. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> so then that does this, which I really like. And then I also use a mask here to sort of reshape my image. So it matches more that height of the 1080 by 1920. So something about that that helps it look, I mean, it just looks more uniform. It doesn't look like a strange um, mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Noras is asking about um, getting authorization from the people that are photographed and it's a good it's a good topic it's a complicated one it's a really yeah. complicated one definitely um, especially when it comes to uh, street photography a day off sorry multitasking is not everyone's forte so uh, street photography gives uh, photography has is very old right so it's gone through a lot of um, situations such as the question you're, you're asking uh, so there's a lot that protects us um, when you're in public domain. You are allowed to take pictures of um, people, of the space. And um, although nowadays, you know, we, we're very concerned about privacy, I think it's very important as a photographer and as a creative to take a sense of responsibility on what that means for you um, and for the individuals that you're photographing. I never use my work uh, in a negative connotation, so I don't have... I don't lose sleep over it, basically. Mm -hmm. I always actually end up 
highlighting the best um, attributes of the scenery. And I, one of my goals is for my photographs to get old and have a representation of maybe what Miami Beach looked like back in back in 2019. Yeah. Once it's in 2040, right? <laughs> Um, we have a good question from Kerwin. Aside from street photography, do you focus specifically on generating social media assets and material, or do you work on other work as well? Generating social media assets? Mm -hmm. uh, or do you work on creating other work as well? Yeah, so, so what, are, what context do you use your street photography in, aside from your portfolio and social media assets, if any? Uh, definitely. Social media would be the very main thing that I that I use it for because mm -hmm. it's sort of it was my school into photography because I was able to um, sh because I was able to showcase my work I got a lot of feedback especially in the early days of Instagram back when it was um, a little bit more intimate um, we would f I would photograph with an iPhone and um, that was helpful at the time just mobile photography. Um, to get feedback from everyone. Mm -hmm. So I still use that as a motto to just present my work, but now I'm shifting into not just presenting my work, but also uh, being more transparent about how I created my work. So social media assets are a very big thing, but I wouldn't even call it assets as much as I would call it just like this, this form of, this venue for expression of my work. Mm -hmm. I do hope to do some printing work in the future because I think that's something that a lot of people don't do anymore, which means you should do it because yeah. it's a rare opportunity. Whenever something's not being done enough, you should try it out. Yeah, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but the great thing about social media is that you can take a relatively you know, straightforward media-like photography and in addition to just simply displaying it, you can use it to create these interactive experiences um, in a way that leverages social media as a way to kind of show a deeper process-related or personal approach at the Yeah, I would say creating. consider what what is it that matters to you. What do you want to, like, really sit down and, and ask yourself, what do you want to um, get out of social media? Sometimes you want the jobs, and sometimes you just want to express your work. Um, luckily for us, social media is a place where everyone tunes in every morning, every afternoon, on the weekends. And that, you know, in the beginning of my career was rare to see that because I had a website in the beginning of my career and I would see my Google Analytics and yeah, maybe I'll get some visitors, but it wasn't the same foot traffic that I get in social media. And I think that in itself is such a huge reason for you to represent your work there. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit earlier um, before the stream starts about, you know, labels for creatives in this day and age. And, uh, you know, we introduced Sin as a photographer and graphic designer, but you really do a whole lot. Um, you yeah. kind of break out of the, like, you're not a street photographer, you do portraits when you're out doing street photography. And, yeah. you know, we're doing motion design and Photoshop, which is pretty cool. What do you think about the labels that oh the labels have. the labels <laughs> i mean we don't like labels <laughs> we're we're new generation for sure i think uh it's always hard to figure out what you want to do in your career and when you figure out what it is that you want to do i think it's also it's very important to just don't let people tell you that that's everything you will have a chance to do so i was a graphic designer for a very long time, and when I started doing photography, um, I was always told that I was no longer a designer, which um, I beg to differ because being a photographer actually allowed me to see graphic design in a different, almost like from a third point perspective. Uh, photography has composition, graphic design has layout, um, and then the, these are the same principles, color principles are very much the same. They evoke emotion, they translate a feeling so I would say don't um, be too specific on the labels. Just if you're curious about a specific um, craft, then just go after it. And maybe it works out for you. Maybe you just try it for a week and it's over, right? Yeah. But it's worth checking it out. I mean, I might check out XD. No one's telling <laughs> me I'm, I'm going to be a, a UI designer, but I just want to try it out. 
So it's it's definitely like that mindset that you have to keep. Yeah, we're in a cool space nowadays where you can kind of try just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, if you're usually working in Photoshop, try XD, try some After Effects. It's great having resources like YouTube or Adobe Live <laughs> yeah. where you can learn things that, you know, you might not have been exposed to otherwise. It does give like a sense of like an identity crisis. I'm like, what, what am I? What do I do? So I actually, this is what inspired my Adobe Creative Residency project. Um, it's called Visual Language because I realized what I do is visual language. I communicate emotions. I communicate a storyline with visuals. Sometimes I don't really speak. Sometimes text is just the last thing that I include. So what did you just drop into the composition here? So uh, another thing that I, I always um, like doing because um, stories are something that people always see first before the, uh, before the grid. I like including a space where I can promote something that I'm working on. So this is a blog post that is coming up and I wanted to just have an opportunity to show that off, but I don't want to do it in a boring way where it's like, here, go check out my website, period. And, you know, using the text <laughs> on Instagram, which is like so the basic fonts, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I did a screenshot of my website here of that, that look, and then I just like introduced it here, and I like including sort of that that element of it's incorporated into the picture, so I'm gonna use a mask again, and then just do that so that makes it feel like it's sort of sitting in the water. Very cool. Yeah, masking is great. So at this point, I like also including um, two more artboards, and I, go either up or down just to let, remind myself that this belongs to this one. So what I'll do here, for example, is maybe I'll start this one here and then I'll move this one over further out. So the idea here is that when the user on Instagram taps, which is the one user interaction we have, um, they're going to be revealing this final piece because it's going, going to go f uh, move forwards, right? Okay, so you're working backwards in a... Yeah, so this is forward. the final result, and then I'll, I'll go up and show sort of how it begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is backwards. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always good to know like sort of where it ends and, and then um, figure out what the animation might be because, I mean, it's not technically an, an animation, but to them it appears as, a, as if it is because mm -hmm. they're interacting with it. Yeah, so a reminder that we're building Instagram stories, so all these different artboards are the different taps and the different screens. The different the taps, exactly. Yeah. And because I was able to uh, hit option and just um, pull pull them upwards, I'm basically making a copy of each one. Mm -hmm. So everything stays in place. So the only moving element is going to be this. And I could have also done other things, right? Like I could have also maybe, let's see, try this. We can, maybe instead of moving it to the right, we are moving this. Let me see how it can undo this. Undo move, undo move. Okay, so we have a new, we have this one and it's still in the same place. Maybe I can move my mask. So it actually does a reveal. So I can start my mask maybe this is the middle, right? So it'll be here. And then I'll make another copy of this one. Yeah, so when you unlink your the mask from the layer, you yeah. can move either the layer independent from the mask or the mask independent from the layer. Just with that little link icon that you yeah, see. Yeah, the yeah. link is. Yeah. So that's, when you unlink it, then you're able to manipulate the, the black that's inside your mask. Mm -hmm. So then, whatever's back will be hidden. So then we could start here, or maybe, wait, I actually think that's too much. But maybe like there. So I would begin like this, and when you tap it, it sort of short, slowly reveal itself. Very cool. So the opportunities here are endless. You can just think of what you want to um, put into motion, and by doing this, I think the real like power of this is just, the viewer feels like it's 
part of the, um, your story because they're interacting with uh, what they see next. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I have. Yeah, Kathleen says it's like screen design, but a super simple interaction. Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like it is. It is kind of like storyboarding, wall designing, um, thinking about the movement that you want and those interactions, but doing it in a very simple way and just not having to know animation. <laughs> yeah, uh, tools. You know, right. Just doing it in Photoshop. <laughs> And it, it, what's interesting about Photoshop is it's always a space where it gives you an intro level of what these more robust programs do. Mm -hmm. And there are, each program is sort of an expert in its own right, right? So we have After Effects, Animations, Amazing, Premieres, Video, Lightroom, Photo, but somehow I'm also always able to do that in Photoshop. I'm able to edit and manipulate a photo like I do in Lightroom. I'm able to open up my timeline and create an animation like I do in After Effects. Mm -hmm. But it's always at an intro level, right. which is such a good perk for you if you're starting. You know that like at least you can conquer that mm -hmm. and you know the basics of other programs. For sure. Yeah, and especially talking about creating content for social media. We kind of touched on this earlier, but you know, stories are 24 hours unless you're featuring them on your profile. So being able to create quickly and iterate quickly is a really valuable tool. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. Mm -hmm. um, so this, uh, another thing that I like doing whenever I take some photos is I'll take photos of things in closer, almost like macro, so that I can use them as design elements. So it's almost like you keep um, extra assets for you to uh, continue designing. So I'll take pictures in this case of a uh, palm tree. I'll take pictures of the sand because it's part of the elements that I was able to see in my original photo. Mm -hmm. I'll take pictures of the umbrellas. And so this this is already something you don't have to um, kind of like remake. It's still it's still like photography and true to the mm -hmm. the aesthetics that you're creating. Mm -hmm. What's the thing here? Right, so then here I wanted to showcase how I developed my color palette for this picture. And I was inspired by the Art Deco uh, colors and history of Miami Beach. And so that's how I came up with this color palette, which is really cool um, when, you, when you just look at it. But then I created some shapes to actually like make it seem more um, Art Deco. Mm. It's so, you don't have to do that, but it's sort of a challenge I take on. So whenever I showcase a color palette, I don't like just putting circles, 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 or, you know. So I try to just uh, go the extra mile and see if I can emulate why I picked that color palette. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was something from the 50s and I'll, I'll create some, some experience that, that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. so, there's, so I made this in, Illustrator, here it is. <laughs> lost in space. It's always lost in space. Floating around. It's all these shapes. Yeah, it's a really fascinating way to think about color palettes in, a, in addition to just, it's a very designer mentality. Instead of just thinking about the straight colors, you're thinking about the patterns and the yeah. textures of that space. It's really, really interesting. Right, so there's, a, there's room for you to just incorporate design into how you're able to c come up with the conceptual editing of your photograph. Mm -hmm. So this is um, how I wanted to showcase that. And in this case, I also want to sort of flip it around and result. So maybe I'll switch this and put it upside down. So when you click it, it will be upside down. So that doesn't have to always be three. Sometimes it could be four. Mm -hmm. How many screens do you typically create for an Instagram story? Um, it really depends. Let's see how we oh, we have already six, <laughs> five. Um, it really depends, but I don't limit because I think even though stories seem, people are very overwhelmed with when they see the tiny little dots, lines, right? Uh, I think it's gonna be worth it if your content is worth tapping, um, especially because because you're get creating the interactive um, panels, you might end up with more, but 
you forget about that because you're just clicking away. And so for you, you're not consuming hundreds of photos. You're you're just seeing something sort of in a in a organized mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Organized fashion. Yeah, really digging into that story term of Instagram stories and just instead of just having that sequential image, 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 you are essentially animating and keeping that attention span. Yeah, that exactly. That second attention span that we were talking about. That, yeah, <laughs> we were talking about how apparently we have like a six second attention span. Mm -hmm. So scary. Yeah. So I'm gonna pick these colors. Akiva is asking about how we export assets for different platforms. We, I think we'll be talking about yeah. exporting a little bit tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and we can definitely touch on that. So make sure you tune in tomorrow, Akib. Okay, so here we can put a background with uh, the rectangle tool. I'll create this shape. And because I have this color already selected in the foreground, it automatically makes it that color. But if you didn't want that color and you wanted actually the background color, um, command backspace, command delete, actually just selects the ones that didn't in the back. So this is a good way to toggle between each one. Jonathan, yes, uh, tomorrow we will be seeing the finished product in action with all the tap interactions. Yeah, in we'll get to see it on the phone mm -hmm. the way you're usually accustomed to seeing it, but now you get to see the full thing. Yeah, your layer organization is pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Gets out of hand eventually. Yeah. But it's really good to just have an idea of where things go. Yeah, especially when we're working with art boards, when you do have that potential for this ever-expanding Photoshop document, it's really helpful to use, you know. Yeah, that, and then we'll go back tools. to, to, um, the naming of the layers, because when you name these folders, uh, it's going to allow you to just like export it and have names for each of these scenes so that you don't get confused of which one goes first, especially in the animated versions, because um, you might put like last first and it gets all weird. Uh, you wanna be able to have a good um, naming protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll see how the, the exporting works um, day two tomorrow, but you know, setting yourself up for an easy export process starts when you're first creating your document and start naming things and really comes in handy when we're talking about exporting for different screens yeah. and social media, for sure. It used to be uh, such an important piece of, um, just because when it comes to using, doing user interface, back to our, our initial like reason why I started using our boards, mm -hmm. you had to make sure all of your files were named appropriate, like appropriately because developers would look at it and be like, where do I even begin? Yeah. <laughs> so do it for yourself, even if it's not going to a, a different designer. Mm -hmm. So how does your, your life in Miami influence your design work, if at all, or photography even too? Um, Miami's a very multifaceted, uh, city mm -hmm. so I can go from one neighborhood to another and it's I'm I feel like I'm in different countries so that definitely uh, let me sort of expand on my street photography before I was able to travel so I I was able to go from like Little Havana which is um, a neighborhood in in Miami that is uh, predominantly uh, Cubans so you just step in there and you feel like it's little Cuba and it's so amazing to see like their architecture is influenced by the neighbor, the neighbors that are there, the people that li live and coexist there, the food, the music. It's, it's so overwhelming almost because mm -hmm. you think, okay, what do I photograph? Um, but that's, that allows me to just have these small practices or these, these small outings where I get to um, explore what it's like to just experience a single culture within um, separate neighborhoods. Sure. And Miami Beach has its own um, essence and culture too, which when you're, we live in a city, when you live in a specific city, you might disregard it, right? If you live in, I don't know, if you live in Canada, you might think snow is irrelevant, but 
to us in Miami. Snow is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, so no if, snow in Miami. <laughs> yeah. So don't be afraid to just uh, photograph the things that you think are normal because those are the elements that actually make your photos uh, appear more authentic. Yeah, using your environment to, to influence whatever you're doing creatively, whether it's going out and finding those hidden gems in your neighborhood or like we were talking about before, finding a really interesting wall or piece of architecture to create a color palette from. It's all ways that you can inform your creative process on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm putting this image here. This, this image is the original photo. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at this image, I, I just remember that that day I was sweating a lot. <laughs> so this image looks really blue. It looks like maybe like it was about to rain. It, it doesn't really express the moment. So what's really important is no matter how expensive the camera, no matter how uh, 4K, thousands of pixels it may have, technology is always, has never been perfect. Um, so we have to just fill in the spaces and this is where the conceptual editing comes in. I have to really uh, stop and consider what was it that I was experiencing and um, what what made me stop and take this photograph, what is the history behind um, the location I'm in, and pulling all of those elements, like the uh, reference to Art Deco, um, may allow me to just kind of go into this color palette um, instead of just doing a neutral blue, stepping into a blue that I was very um, close to the color palette used in Art Deco. Very cool, yeah. Yeah, it definitely has a very Miami <laughs> feel to it. Right. Everyone in the chat is saying that this stream is making them want to go to the beach, and I totally agree, yeah. especially because it Shoot, was kind of chilly this there morning. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's beach chilly trip. in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it always is. It's been, it was really nice this weekend, though. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely given us those beachy vibes today. Good yeah. to vibe to have. It's always nice, right? To, yeah. To feel like you just um, stepped into a new, another place through the screen. Yes. That's something to really consider. Uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we just watch things and we're like, okay, fine, great. Um, I, I appreciate that you made that, but I don't feel anything about it. You didn't change my day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So what? So we're. It looks like we have a little slider going yes. on here. So because I wanted to explain how, so this, this explanation I just showed you of how I made this conceptual edit, I thought it would be very neat if I can have the viewer interact with it. So as I'm showing you how I edit, edited this image, the slider will move forward and it's almost like if Instagram had that feature. <laughs> Um, it would showcase sort of like that. So it'll show you the, the result as you tap. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a before and after um, yeah, with, sort of process. Exactly. Awesome. So then I'll do the same thing here. But then I'll put the second image, which is sort of, this is the last one, but this one was when I looked too sharp and not enough. Um, dreamy <laughs> aesthetics to it. Yeah, this one. Yeah, the pattern of those umbrellas and the, it's it's really cool seeing the, the pattern of the colors and the stripes too. Like there's the yellow on that one side and then blues and um, yeah. was, were those set up or was there any photo editing going on there? Um, no, that, that was actually the space. Um, that's, kind of why I went at one o'clock because the, all of the umbrellas are out and um, everyone's out too. <laughs> it's hard for us because we're just there photographing and not enjoying the beach, but yeah. afterwards you're able to just sort of see and, um, and just like appreciate what it looked like. For sure. Yeah, and getting so, to photograph at the beach isn't too bad either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then this, this picture here, I had, I had an opportunity to say like, okay, this is too dark and too, um, I mean, it's too blue, so it doesn't give that essence of summer. So I warmed it, I, I um, increased the warmth in it. But when I did that, um, then the shadows were very uh, extreme and too contrasted, which I think it gives it just, it still looks dark, even though it's not dark as highlights, it just, it makes it look too, 
too aggressive mm -hmm. and I didn't want that. So this is just sort of the second phase of that. So you have a mask that's gonna move throughout or between these screens? Yeah, so then this is the mask, right? Mm -hmm. So the white is showcasing the image and then you'll see that I'm able to sort of hide the other side and also align it with this little tab here. Okay, gotcha. So the tab's moving as the screen's mm -hmm. moving, gotcha. Very cool. And so I'll do that. And I think in this one, which is really cool, I ended up doing, um, so you can also hit command and hit the, the uh, mask to be able to select that mask. And I'll add another layer. And uh, sometimes I like using shadows. I like creating um, pseudo shadows as if it, like the space is a little bit more 3D. So things like that. Mm -hmm. So D kind of puts that palette back to normal. That's what I just did there. And so this will give it sort of a dimension and I can go to maybe like multiply and reduce that and just makes it seem like it's standing out or coming mm -hmm. through. Nora is saying that he's imagining us on the beach streaming from the beach, which would be amazing. Yeah. But <laughs> Kathleen makes maybe a good we point should insert the green, <laughs> the beach behind us. Yeah, yeah. Can we get a beach scene? We technically Probably can not. go to the beach after this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and destroy all of the wonderful equipment that Paco <laughs> set up for us. <laughs> Hypothetically, apologize for that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll start doing streams from all the locations that you're taking your photos at. Just go to Miami Beach for the day. Yeah. Do a stream you, there. You're welcome to come. <laughs> it looks like summer all year long. <laughs> so then I'll insert the final photo, which is this one. And then hope it's in the right place there. And what I can do is just uh, borrow that mask and um, transfer it over to the image that I just placed. So I don't have to make a new mask. Gotcha. Yeah, so for that, um, you can, for anyone who didn't know, you can move masks between layers without changing them. Um, just like Sin just did, about just dragging it to the other layer, which is super help, yeah. super handy, especially when you're working with different screens like this. So what I wanted to do is also include this text sort of as a reveal because I think what's really cool about that is that it forces somebody to read the the text. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just, I actually want this in full. So let's say I, I complete this and this goes all the way to the end. So lots of little moving elements that you kind of have to track between yeah. the screens here. Let's say we move this one to here and move the shadow somewhere closer. Nope. Okay. <laughs> so let's say I move this mask. Whenever you want to reveal something, you could just always open it up. So kind of looks like that when you do that. Okay. Do you ever zoom in and make these full screen and kind of move between artboards to get a preview of what the action is going to look like? Um, or I guess what you know, when you're when you're creating this, how do you is it mostly just in your head about it's how mostly, it's going to look? Yeah, and, yeah. It's mostly in my head and then I'll do maybe I'll stop halfway and do a little test run and see if if my new idea is gonna come through, but I've done this a few times, so I know that it's most likely going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and from time to time, I'll come up with something brand new. Yeah, if you know when you're, if you guys start developing these for yourselves, if you find an interaction that you really like, you can always just reuse it. And yeah, drop new photos in. Exactly. It's gonna look different. Change up the type, change around the colors a little bit, so you can use it as a creative template almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. So I wanted to reveal. So then as you're, so this is concept, the world, the word conceptual edit is also sort of hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, but then as you're revealing the image, the word conceptual edit is also revealing itself, which is going to just 
kind of engrave that idea into the person's head. Oh, that's what's happening. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. So, so we're creating that full screen wipe effect, especially exactly. with that shadow. It's really awesome, that sense of depth that you get. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan great. says nothing is impossible Impossible with the power of impossible. friendship. <laughs> it's like SpongeBob. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yay, we have a beach. Paco wow. made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paco. We're um, spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that has to be a that has to be a new thing where we just go to the beach every now and then, suddenly in the middle of a stream. Yeah. We're at the beach. <laughs> that was fun. And I think we're going to space tomorrow when we do portfolio reviews. So we get to go to the beach and to space. Going everywhere today. Um, so, uh, I also wanted to include here the my process. So I was editing actually, I'm, it's fully immersed. I was I ended up editing in the beach um, by the lifeguard house, on the lifeguard house once he left. And it just is something that I think is interesting to allow you guys to see sort of behind the screen, behind the scenes of how this happens because I, I like to demystify this idea that you always have to be behind um, a desk inside a room. Uh, more, the most, um, I guess, uh, the most powerful thing that I've gotten out of street photography has been getting out of the office yes. and being able to just explore places that are, I wouldn't otherwise go into. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it goes, um, it happens the same way for editing. So you don't have to edit in the office. You can, nowadays we have portable computers. So yes. definitely take advantage of that. We have portable um, phones and editing on um, phone apps are also like venues that we can explore. So I would really encourage people to do that. And in this case, I wanted to show off that I got to do this edit in the beach. Very cool. <laughs> Yeah, there's little insights to your process. And just like you said, we have laptops. We can edit yeah. anywhere. You can do this stuff on the go, literally. Um, and having those little insights is another great re way of using social media to say, yeah. here's that image, but here's how it was created. And it's really important because you have to sort of get yourself, it, uh, as an artist, at least artists that pursue only art, they're encouraged to get in, get their um, themselves into the mindset of what they're going to make. But when it comes to graphic or technology, we, we're not usually encouraged to do that. It's more of uh, these are the to-do lists, uh, this, these are the specs, this is the brand assets. Um, and it's all that's great. It's great to be organized and know those elements, but it's also important to submerge yourself in the concept when, if you're I don't know, if you're taking pictures of cars, drive that car, push it to the limit, whatever it is, so that it might inspire, this might inspire what you might create here. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, I wanted to really showcase how I edited my photo, but you guys might have a different pursuit altogether and might use these animation elements yeah. um, to your benefit. But in a storytelling world, you really have to stop and contemplate, okay, what do I wanna say? Why does it even matter? Uh, and you'll find that you have a lot to say. Uh, I, I think that's that's one of the things that um, one of the coaches told us yesterday, which is very encouraging to me, is you know your work best, so no matter where you are and whoever you're explaining it to, you can, uh, you're always gonna sort of find a way to say it because you know your work better than others, so. Yeah, infusing some of your personality, your own personality <laughs> and the person behind the work into that really self branding initiative. It's pretty yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. That's where branding begins, I think. Uh, self branding is hard. It's really, really hard. A lot of people sort of just kind of leave it to the, the end because of that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important to be able to have like um, your own aesthetic or the, develop it like slowly because, I mean, something like my cover. Um, I wasn't even sure when I graduated from from um, graphic design what I wanted to do. And now it's just like things just flow and next thing you know I have a sticker on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> With a big C for sticker. Yeah. 
pretty cool. Yeah, Jonathan says the last photo really brings you back to a more personal level within the story, which is totally right. Yeah. Yeah, really gives you a good peek behind the camera to the right. person behind it. Yeah, and the, that's what we were referring to earlier, mm -hmm. this idea that, um, let me take this out, this idea that you're able to be a little bit more intimate in a, in a world or social media is very much known not to be something that's true to connections as much as we wanted it to be that. Mm -hmm. So when you're transparent with your work, I think it helps other people develop theirs. And I really think that's true because that's how I learned my, my craft. I just learned from all the people that were willing to show me and be transparent with me and show me how their work is um, created and uh, bring bring me into their world, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's really cool. So this is also another picture I took. Um, back to our assets, I took this picture of a palm tree and then I just re inversed it. And you can just do that with Command I. And I wanted to inverse it because I wanted like this very like um, graphic element to it, even though it's a photo. Definitely achieves that for sure. Mm -hmm. Adding that extra element. And it's I added a subst subtract. Yeah, subtract. Yes, Voodoo, thank you for Voodoo Val. Voodoo. <laughs> uh, thank you for the reminder. We are cool gonna name. do the challenge feedback in just about under 12 minutes. So make sure that you finish up your creations, submit that them uh, to Discord and check out that challenge tab for all the info. We'll be looking at those soon. Yeah, I'm excited to look at those. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that palm tree adds such a great level of depth that kind of mirrors that um, the shadow. Yeah, right. So, going through in so it's always, um, I, I really encourage um, everyone to just not stop and take the photo that you wanted, but also take another day and um, try to bring in some elements. If you're going to design work into something like this, where it's just, it, it's graphic elements combined with photography, combined with just like these these things that you just get them to be a sort of strange, weird photography merge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely gather assets um, organically. So gather them on, while you're producing and also while you're behind the scenes and, and the screen. I think it's gonna be like much easier to make things that way. We can all be multi-purpose design human beans. Yeah. <laughs> beans. <laughs> That's a theme. Human beans. Creative human beans today. Yeah, so when you're when you're thinking about your personal brand, is there is there a particular aesthetic that, that you feel like you have? Um, or a theme to your work? I wanna say that's always hard. That's a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> Who are <Oops>. you? <laughs> Who are you? Uh, I, I want to say my aesthetic is uh, one of the key words that I like to think of whenever I'm making my work is storytelling. So just uh, always try to convey a, a story. Uh, I, that's the easiest, most universal way to achieve something across the screen. So. I find new mediums to tell stories. Sometimes you, I tell stories by creating series of photographs. Sometimes I tell stories by doing a very curated um, design I, IG story uh, post, right? So storytelling, as I know it's a buzzword and people just throw it around, but when you really kind of just stop and think about what it means to you, you're gonna be able to have like opportunities to tell other people's stories I've had uh, in the past, a chance to do some street photography for, actually I was talking about this neighborhood of Little Havana, I had the opportunity to photograph the people in it and the architecture in, as a way to uh, protect it for, from, um, you know, big corporations just sort of like removing the people uh, from their, their homes and things like that. So I wanted to have a, a chance to tell their stories and I was able to do that through just photography. So. Yeah. Storytelling is very powerful um, depending on your medium. Yeah, Samantha, self-promo is really hard. It's it's very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, but you know, that, that storytelling approach is really interesting because it gives you 
you know, that platform for saying this is the work and this is the story behind it. And it's that very natural way of kind of infusing some self promo into your work. Yeah. Self promo is you, you can't be ashamed of it. You, you have to say like, my work is good. Even if it's just sort of in the starting phases of um, your journey, it's important to showcase your work because you never know who's gonna give you really good feedback or even if you don't have any feedback and it's just like no one cares because that's how we always feel, right? Like nobody cares about our work. It still means a lot that you were able to complete something and you put it out there and now it's just first and foremost for you. Um, so put your work out there even if it's not completed. I think we all like, we're very much perfectionists. Yes. Definitely. So we always wanna be like, okay, like I'm just gonna store you in a folder forever mm -hmm. and <laughs> never showcase you until you're ready. Um, I don't think that's quite um, the way to go because we all love to see the process. And when I see my work back in the day and I see unfinished projects, I see still like remnants of um, very, uh, interesting elements that I don't do now, but maybe I can reincorporate, right? So yeah, yeah, definitely. And there are lots of um, places where you can show your in-progress work or again, thinking about self-promo in a very sort of non-traditional way. I know that Behance has work in progress options. Yeah. Um, you can put your mood boards on Behance now, which is pretty cool, uh, and just leveraging, leveraging social media to really dig into that social aspect yeah. of uh, promoting yourself online, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Also, you never know who might actually like your strange aesthetic, right? There's brands out there that are um, always looking for more authentic um, personalities, so, Brands are nothing without a personality. And I think we are the ones that bring in those very genuine uh, personalities into their products. What? Could you put your Photoshop full screen? Uh. <laughs> F for shortcut. F, boom. Full screen, yay. So uh, I think it's important to just showcase your work for that too, because there's a potential that you're you might you might end up in the phones of very important people that might like your aesthetic and you might think it's weird and it's new and no one's doing it, so therefore it might be wrong, mm -hmm. but actually it might be an opportunity for somebody to just hire you because you do these weird illustrations or you do these weird photo manipulations or you have an opportunity to photograph Iceland whereas other people don't. Things like that could I just sort of open up. So that's that's the power of social media, I think. Definitely. Yeah, Jonathan, I need an introvert's guide to self-promotion. Yes, 100%. But that's kind of, it. that's like the power introvert? of social media. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm for an sure. introvert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think 100% yeah. introvert. And yeah. this is sort of one of those things where you just, I, I don't know, it's, it's not about being introverted or extroverted, it's about knowing that you're you're going to you're in a journey and it's going to evolve um eventually and it's actually your work and not you out there right like it's this is an easy way actually this is made for introverts you don't know that but it's made for us actually yeah like self promo <laughs> used to be i mean it still is like face to face interactions are still very important yeah. but you can also do so much of it from behind your phone or and right. and not seem like you have that introverted <laughs> block yeah. i guess yeah. yeah. Yes, I love this advice. Be weird. Be weird is good. Be weird is very good. Weird. <laughs> being weird is very good. Yeah, and and being okay with showing that personality on on social media. We is should great have a too. weird meter. <laughs> <laughs> we already went one. to the beach, so we're going weird now. <laughs> going to somewhere real crazy. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a, such a cool element of social media is that you can have self-promo every day if you want to. Right, yeah. right. Um, and you can promote your work sort of as an extension of you without having to showcase um, like you every single day, like your, sure. your face. Um, and th those, those steps will come eventually. I mean, this is my first Adobe Live and I feel very comfortable right now. Um, 
thanks to Kendall mostly. <laughs> but it's something that you just realize, okay, well, I know what I'm doing, so it's it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it takes time. First, I, I the first few years of my um, social media time or social media life, don't know what to call it, I just showcased my work so much that like a lot of people thought maybe I was a, a guy photographer because they couldn't peg, like, what is this? Like, is this Sin Lagos? Who is this person? And then eventually I showcased like a picture of myself and they were like, oh, okay, so that's, that's who, she, who she is. But it doesn't have to, and I was very successful during that entire time, just showcasing my work alone. So it doesn't have to be you. Uh, in the first few steps, you can always just like allow your work to speak who you are and what you represent. Yeah. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's all about developing yourself as a creative, even if it's kind of figuring out along the way. That's right, okay. right. Yeah. yeah. So I have some more um, of those elements here. I really love these these things when I capture them. I end up just sort of using them as like my phone cover. I don't know if you can see that there. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's just so cool to just have all these um, different elements to just throw in here. And, I didn't really do too much composition here. I mean, the image is almost dead center. I wish it was dead center. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then just something like this actually doesn't take me that long because what what took me longer was just going out there and scouting for these photos. Mm -hmm. But once I'm here, then I can actually probably output this pretty fast because I have a structure, I have an idea that I have to do a cover this headline section, I wanted to just put that there because sometimes I just leave room for me to just put text once I'm on Instagram. So I, I leave room for for um, for me to think of something last minute. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to actually do the text here if I didn't want to. I can just like use uh, Instagram, Instagram sliders, um, do a poll if I wanted to, ask a question. But this uh, picture allows me that room and that uh, visual space to insert more information. Yeah, it's almost a placeholder. Yeah, it's a placeholder, exactly. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, the the, the designs are, are simple in a good way, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that, you know, like we've been talking about for producing stuff for social media, yeah. it's, it's good that you can create a very interactive experience with pretty simple assets. Yeah, very simple assets, and also um, it's not, too um, high, too much of like a high production. So all that I used here was photos, graphics, and artboards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty nuts. Glenn is asking if you ever reuse the layouts that you create. Oh, for sure. I have. I make templates. Um, I eventually just sort of maybe instead of having this, I'll just insert a new picture here and put the same um, mask and it's a brand new one, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'll, I'll insert a new background. This is why it's good to convert them into vector because you can also double click this, right? And then if I wanted to put this as my back background instead and you hit save or merge them and hit save. <laughs> yeah, learning how to utilize smart objects is such a great yeah. tool. Then it appears as your backdrop. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Like super fast. Yes, Jonathan says you've really opened my eyes to the benefits of artboards in Photoshop. Yay! Yes. <laughs> they're great. They're really fun. Once you, once you get a handle on how to use them, they're so, so useful. Yeah, they're very useful. And also this, section here, being able to merge um, your photography. I use this so much. So sometimes I might use this, let's say if, if I really like this and I want to export this into um, the grid instead of my stories, right? You have the opportunity to go up here and say, it's not gonna be um, 1080 by 1920, but it's, I think it's 1080 by 1350, I wanna say, so. So that kind of shortens it, mm -hmm. and then you're able to just kind of grab all your assets and make them smaller. Very cool. Right. Awesome. All right, I think we are going to transition into the design feedback 
section of the stream. Um, so once again, we are on Discord and you can enter the daily creative challenges using the challenge tab um, on Behance. But today we are going to be looking at create a cinematic photo effect using adjustment layers. I hope I got that right, I think I did. Um, so let's, let's go through these. So it's almost like color grading, which is pretty, pretty cool. So I got this very nice blue tone wow. going on. Yeah. yeah. I really like this. Uh, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, so it's boxing. It's very masculine. So the blue color definitely accentuates that. It's really well done. I think there's a little bit of a vignetting, which looks like it. Yeah, emphasizes the the subject. Um, don't be afraid to use that. I think it's a really good way to just um, create drama with the lighting that you have already. The first photo is already really good, so you have some really dramatic lighting. Like half his face is um, bright, but half his face isn't, which makes you think like. Is he gonna hurt me? Is a good guy a bad guy? Yeah, right. yeah. It's amazing to see the difference between the original and the edited photo. How much that figure pops out of the yeah. background just with that color grading. Very cool. Yes, very nice. cool. That was from <laughs> Mid Cushion. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> All right, let's go up. Oh, I think we missed one. Let's get that guy. So here's the original. Whoa. And here's the after. Really cool. Look at how much that red pops out. It's so you have a, you have similar elements. I think there's a light hidden back there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. Yeah, okay, that's so here. what's interesting about this photo, I would still accentuate the highlights a little bit more because you do mm. want to create that drama that we talked about earlier. And you have, you, it looks like you have it there. It's already there. You just have to create increase that contrast and by contrast i don't mean the actual contrast uh tab you can create contrast by pushing two different colors and opposite sides or uh, increasing highlights and shadows on opposite sides and i think that gives you a little bit more control so i would say that i think it will help bring out those elements i also like his red shoe for some yeah, reason that shoe is there's, really cool <laughs> yes <laughs> there's like red and blue going on here which is nice yeah color grading gave mm -hmm. him a much darker mood yes amanda Definitely. All right, let's head back up. Very cool. Oh, this is really cute. Look at that orange in the background. Really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of power in these photos, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, was that the theme? <laughs> definitely, yeah, that cinematic effect we're going yeah. for. And that so definitely hits it. I think a lot of you guys are familiar with how in cinema, um, opposites, opposite colors like blues and uh, warm colors and cold colors, when they're together, they create a very cinematic um, effect. Mm -hmm. I think these guys uh, or girls really know that um, that tip because I keep seeing it here. Yeah. Uh, so the orange on the back is, is really nice. I would still, again with this one, I would still kind of push the colors a little bit further. Uh, this could be your, just your aesthetic. Um, I personally would, would just uh, increase those shadows because this demands drama, right? Like look at this guy, this kid, he's just like- <laughs> He demands drama. <laughs> he, demands he demands drama. <laughs> yeah. He's about to fly off into um, Manhattan. <laughs> yes, what a great one. I love this one. All right. My attempt, okay. So this one's a little bit more subtle but it's interesting. It kind of has a split tony effect with the green undertones going on. Mm, I see that, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. I, I like doing undertones. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to um, introduce a different um, element. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you use green, it can make it feel like it's maybe the enemy, maybe, depends what you how you perceive those colors, right? Mm -hmm. It might be like sick, someone's sick or Green could be a, an alternative to the blue hues I usually use. Um, it's good to introduce those in the undertones. Definitely. It's like they're just very subtle. Yeah, yeah, it's a very nice subtle approach. Good job, Olga. All right, oh, this is the before. Okay, so I see Marissa posted it as two, so this was her before for yeah. that one. A blur and color grading, so Pat gave us some blur as well. This is really wow. interesting. 
Yeah, so the first one. Wow, so the guests are gone. <laughs> yeah, it really, really pulls in that focus. It's simulating that very, you know, shallow depth of field. Yeah. That a lot of lenses have. I think that was a good call. Mm -hmm. That was a good call because in that second one, I, I'm really forced to just see the expressions on um, the groom and the bride. Yeah. Uh, the removing the color was also a good choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the it's color beautiful. in this case is not. It wasn't adding anything. There is no narrative to these colors. Um, the green in the back again. It, it might exude a different, more of negative connotation. I don't know if that's the right way. I think mm -hmm. the last one is closer to that. It's very evangelic. It's almost like very pure. I like that last one a lot. Very cool. Yes. Nice, nice job, Pat. Let me see, it looks like Moan missed one, but we'll go back to Every it. Every hero has a beginning, <laughs> Jonathan. It's so true. It's true. All right, we have another one. Going for those cool tones again. Very nice. That red in that shoe pops out, you know? <laughs> that contrast with the blue and the, yeah. the cool and the warm tones. Actually, when you're photographing, it's good to think about mm -hmm. um, how you might edit your photos so you might intentionally want to include these contrasted colors. You might want to include something else that was red and within the photo because you know it's going to be edited afterwards. Yes. Or maybe it was a shirt. Uh, maybe the space itself is blue, but his shirt is red. Mm -hmm. And that would give um, more pop to your subject. Very good, though. Nice job, Mikey. All right, we got a nice crop on this one. Talk about cinematic. That super yes, wide angle. 16 by 9. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah, mimics the the you know cinema format. Cinema, cinema format, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I I want to say we should put out a vote for for Instagram to let us do sixteen by nine <laughs> on the grid. Yes, that would be great. <laughs> it would be amazing, <laughs> yeah. even like just vertical because you just get all this height. The yeah. phones are sixteen by nine. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree? I really think I that. agree. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah. Um, so with this one, even though you're losing the red shoe, you still got yeah, such you drama lost the red shoe. On. Yeah. <laughs> Cool though, it's great. Yeah, nice job, Ant. All right, this is interesting. Yeah, so we have this is our before. Yeah. The before this is, is our after. Spectacular. Yeah. Is that our before? Yeah. Like oh wait. There might be yeah, another. before and after. So we have you know those those blues get a lot deeper and more saturated, which is pretty beautiful. Yeah. I I like this crop. Um, Especially because it is a landscape. Mm -hmm. So it's like a perfect fit. Yeah. I would have pushed them a little bit more to the left mm. because right now he's not in the center. He's not to, he's not to the left. He's just mm. not enough. And that way, because if you push him to the left, then you, you're you forcing the viewer to look to, towards the right, which is where he's facing. Yes. And it's true. sort of like this infinity experience of infinity because the right hand side will be more uh, open. Yeah. Getting those rule of thirds in. Yeah. Nice job, Mina. That's a really, it's a really impactful crop on that one, too. Um, and I love the, the, the low yes, that's picture, really right? Definitely. You're able yeah. to see that grass. Really beautiful composition. All right. Nice, Gerard. More blue. So much blue. It's yeah. really, really beautiful. <laughs> those, those blues that we're seeing are fantastic. They're nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted, I want you to push, the the color palette, the color spectrum here. Mm. So if you do like the blues, like maybe you would try a blue with, a tone of green. Maybe try a blue with a tone of, um, pink, and try to see what those two like. Sort of put them side by side and test what kind of emotions just to emulate because it depends what you're going for. Maybe you want this guy to look aggressive or maybe you want to give the viewer a little bit of an insight of his vulnerability. Uh, colors are a great way to evoke thing, emotions like that. So test yourself and then maybe take it to friends and test it, allow them to give you some insight. Yeah, yeah. The great thing about color grading and using adjustments in Photoshop is that you can change them. So if you have mm -hmm a blue tone or a cool tone and you just want to radically change the tone yeah. of the image, you can do so really easily. Push the extremes. I yeah. think that none of us do that enough. We're just like slowly going through the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, really great. And 
again, that um, long cinematic horizontal crop is really great. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Gerard. Okay, I think that was day six. I think we had a couple more that we can take a look at. It snuck in at the last moment. Let's see, 11.02, there we go. Yeah, let's choose this one. So this was the original image again. And here is Agos's edited photo. A lot of dark, deep blacks yeah, on this one. It's very dramatic. Um, I, I really want to see an edit where the chains come out a little bit more. I think it's interesting to see like the, there's like bits of highlights on the chain that if you were to push them out, it would make them look almost 3D. Mm -hmm. And which is kind of interesting because what happens with the cameras, whatever's closer to the lens will always look bigger. And that those chains can become, can become a symbolic a representation of something he's trying to break away from or he's trying to like, you know, move mm. past. Um, that's like, those are small ways that you can introduce um, storytelling within this picture. Definitely, yeah, what's the story going on here? Yeah, you can so change it. Increasing the highlights in yeah. anything uh, will always almost act as if it's sharper. Mm -hmm. I That's one trick I use a lot because um, adding more pixels doesn't, we'll do that, but it will also make it look grainy, so it's not, a, it's right. very scary. Yeah. Um, so pushing the highlights or the shadows I think it, it gives that eye, that illusion of mm -hmm. more sharpness. Yeah, Jonathan says, I still want those shoes. So, <laughs> it's yeah. a good shoe ad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that red contrasting the rest of the blue. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. I think we have a little bit more time for a couple of other ones. Ooh, got Ooh. some text on this one. This is a movie premiere. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Seriously. Strong yeah. guy, leading, guy, leading lady, second lead. Very cool. Yeah, so really went literal with that cinematic effect. <laughs> yeah. Turn it into a movie poster or it would have been billboard, I guess. Yeah, so it would have been kind of cool if, like, the T was breaking away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like he was oh, about yeah, to punch it. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Punching right through it. Maybe yeah. it could be animated afterwards. I'm glad you were able yeah. to envision the potential of this as a poster and also, like, the position, the placement of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you could even use some of our... Um, some of the tips that we told, uh, we explained earlier of incorporating maybe text with the background with masks, you could have incorporated like some, some of the letters behind um, the elements in the back, right? So yes, yeah, yeah. Where you, all of these images, think about using them in a composition or right. with type, or what sort of interaction you could give mm -hmm. to it. Think yeah, about definitely. the the potential life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That was from D. Nice job, D. Oh, this is nice. Oh, we have, this is really cute. Yeah. yeah. That's really nice. <laughs> that look. <laughs> the girl in the back, right? Did you go to her first? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> She's like, I want to sing. That's awesome. That's I a really cute photo, though. Um, nice, nice orange green contrast going on in this one. It's almost the same colors, right? She's mm -hmm. wearing the same shirt. Mm -hmm. Purple. Looks like so it. I, I'm not sure if you wanted to accentuate the girl in the foreground or the girl in the background. If it was the girl in the background, you did a great job. I went directly to her, and it's probably because her eyes very dominant. Uh, so that helps a lot when you're trying to get. Whereas the girl in the foreground, she's actually kind of looking to the side. Mm -hmm. um, I think you did some blur, or I don't know if that's like actually part of the the. The picture was you did it post, mm. but that's a really good way to just kind of bring attention to the thing that you want. If you wanted attention to the girl on the side, um, I would have probably maybe accentuated um, her colors more than the girls in the background in that way because they're they're wearing the same shirt, so they're merging a little bit mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that the focus of this one kind of moves a little bit. Like, obviously, that the, the girl on the far right is yeah. in focus, but there's such drama going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone says, who is it? Yeah, Jonathan says the girl in the back stole someone's blue slushy. Kind of looks like it. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> I think we can do a couple more. Let's see. Some last-minute ones. Let's see. These are two different ones but similar sort of editing but without the crop it's a very very similar with the color i tones. like this crop better because you're mm -hmm. able to see her hands mm -hmm. it's not so good to cut um heads or hands mm. 
sometimes, you know, rules are meant to be broken, but. Yeah. Mm hmm. Definitely. I like this crab better. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Paco, can we do a couple more? <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have this one. So we're back to the boxer. So this is an interesting crop. So the before it is on the left and the after is on the right. And it looks like, oh, I guess the crop stayed the same. It was interesting little. Yeah, it, um, it looked different. Yeah, actually. it did. Optical illusion. Mm. A, lot more crop, a lot more contrast on this one. And once again, that red shoe, that is like the theme of <laughs> this image. I just is noticed that red he had tattoos. Through, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, what if like, I'd like the previous shot where we were able to see like the lack of color. Mm -hmm. That would have been really interesting here because then we can just see the drama of all the lighting. Yeah, definitely. That could be something and it could, it doesn't have to be black and white, it could also be brown mm -hmm. because you have these like elements here that uh, give it that vintage aesthetic. Yeah, the strong blues and some of the other edits that um, we saw, even though it's the same image, this one with those with the warm tones coming back is a, is a very different tone to it. So even though there's some of that blue cool tone like we saw in the previous versions. Yeah, and yeah. another thing you can do also is um, anything that is unnecessary and it's not adding to your photo, uh, you might want to like just re reduce it. So like there's a little light in the back of, by the window. I can't tell quite what it is, but I don't think it's adding to it. So you can also um, do spot um, selection and then remove that or not remove it entirely but just reduce the the strength of the lighting the definitely third, yeah yeah and I think someone mentioned that in the comments as well and the area that we're talking about is this one right here um, I think right yeah yeah um, generally for this photo maybe going in and using some retouching tools to yeah really hone in that and I know focus retouching tools can be sort of um, intimidating but there's all there's so many ways for you to just like reduce the attention of things by mm -hmm. just maybe desaturating that could be one way of doing that without having to remove an entire element and like messing with that window but desaturating it would give it less attention right mm -hmm. or maybe using that blur technique that someone else used earlier right the blur the technique photo. was great yeah. yeah that's very cool nice job Corv. Ooh, we have a dark one. Look at the highlight in the background on this one really popping out. Yeah. Super dark edit. Yeah, very every every edit has been very masculine. Mm -hmm. I would be very curious to see a super feminine edit on this one. Good. Um, Someone do it quickly. <laughs> completely push it the, and, and the other side, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think what's interesting about something that that it's already creating so much uh, power, or th those sensibilities, it's it's nice to be able to push it in a different direction, create mm -hmm. irony because, I don't know, the background is sort of, and, and by female, like, by feminine um, edit, I don't mean like something pink. Right. It could have easily been something um, warmer. Mm -hmm. um, so then pushing like those boundaries of like, okay, he's a powerful guy. But then his environment could be something more, more toned down, so that it pushes that ex um, posture that he has going on a little bit further. Because my editing is sort of not taking over. For sure, yeah. In addition to creating literal contrast in the light and the shadows yeah. and the colors, like really trying to create tonal, tonal contrast, contrast in the yes. subject matter of the photo yes. is always Perfectly. fun to play around with. Yeah, those are awesome suggestions. Um, okay, so that is. That are the, those, woo, there we go. Those are the <laughs> entries for today's Daily Creative Challenge. Good job, guys, um, yeah. Really nice. fantastic. Um, and, you know, when you have a photo, try a couple different looks about it, looks yeah. on it. Yeah. Like we were just talking about. Try to do something a little bit softer or really yeah. contrasty. Yeah, push it in different directions. But I'm already very impressed that you mm -hmm. are able to understand what the idea of cinematic yes. really represents. Um, and cinematic can go in different directions, of course, but mm -hmm. these, I think, did a great job. Yeah, mm -hmm. well done. Nice job, guys. So remember to keep watching for the rest of the week um, for a new daily cre creative challenge every single day, hence the daily part of that. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a new one tomorrow, which um, we can go over then too, but 
Um, yeah, so we have about 10 minutes left, so I think we're gonna pop over into Photoshop and work on um, Sin's asset a little bit more. Just mm -hmm. kind of keep going with that one. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions um, about social media and how to um, grow your uh, career in social media, um, definitely let me know. I, I've grown my entire career in social media. It's mm -hmm. sort of a nuts to say it out loud. Um, but just the opportunities of connecting with different people is is very real. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a fantasy. You, there, there are very important people out there that have a Twitter feed, right? Like mm -hmm. <laughs> have an Instagram account now, nowadays. And, um, and I think showcasing your work in such an interesting fashion will always like bring those eyes over to your accounts. Definitely, yeah, utilizing social media to to connect with people, brand yourself, show yeah. off your work. I mean, it's so multifaceted. Yeah. Yeah. Doing Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Long time no talk. Oh. <laughs> when are we live again? We're going to be live again at noon? Or no, 12, 11.30. I'm sorry. Yes, 11.30. <laughs> I lost a half an hour. Yes, and, and we'll be able to actually, we'll get to animate um, the cover. Yeah. Yeah, on Photoshop. Yeah. So yes, we'll be live again. We won't be live, but there is another live stream at 11.30 right after we wrap up. And Sin and I will, will be back tomorrow at the same time, 9.30, um, to wrap up this. Yeah, Julia's asking, what is my Instagram name? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Instagram. So it's Sin Lagos. It's like a tricky name, but it's my name. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it stands for Cynthia Lagos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Someone asked that earlier, I think. And yeah, actually is. these are the highlights I was explaining to you guys earlier, which is really interesting mm -hmm. because um, in here I've been able to just um, create some different stories just out of just experimenting. Mm -hmm. And in here you'll be able to see, right now I'm clicking, but on the phone it would be a tapping motion that would reveal each section. Mm-hmm. There's a question about um, stories on Facebook. Do you also put these stories on Facebook? Actually, I just started doing that, which is really interesting because I've gotten a really good reception. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So it, it, Instagram and Facebook are one and the same now. So mm -hmm. I thought it was only natural to do that, but it's still more, more specifically made for um, Instagram. Yes. Yeah, so definitely go give Sin a follow. I'll just pop her link into the chat. Um, yeah, give her a follow, look at all those stories. There's probably some interaction hidden in those, which we were working on today in Photoshop yeah. and we'll continue to do tomorrow. Yeah, and especially if you guys see any elements in uh, some of these stories that you would like for me to uh, play around with, I'll definitely include that. I think it's interesting to me to see which ones resonate most. Mm -hmm. I'm of course obsessed with like different interactions. Um, and I'll repeat them a lot, but I've some once in a while I get comments and I'm like, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely um, tune in tomorrow at 9:30 to see part two of Sin's project, where we're gonna have some animating in photo or mm -hmm. in Photoshop uh, and continuing that design. Yeah. So. Thank you guys all for tuning in today. It was a really fun stream. And Sin, thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much. For joining much. us. Yes. And hopefully we'll see y'all tomorrow. Don't forget about those daily creative challenges and keep watching for more live content. Thanks, y'all. See you guys.